The economy is in a bubble, and after the bubble bursts, you'll see a 40 to 50 percent collapse in the first two and a half months, says Harry Dent, founder of HS Dent and editor of HS Dent Forecast. She tells Daniela Cambone in this issue of Outlook 2022, the tipping point that the Fed's start to raise interest rates will mark the peak of this market. Dent believes we are close to peak inflation levels and says, once we get out of this crisis, you won't see inflation above a few percent for the rest of my life. Dent examines all the leading indicators of what he calls moving towards a crash, and, we would be very surprised if we don't get the first crash in the first quarter. Listen to the full podcast to understand what's going on the US stock market, and are we witnessing a serious stock market crash? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. Harry, uh, good to see you again. Welcome back. Yeah, nice to be back. Got a lot of ground to cover and you know where I'm going to go first. Uh, you don't come with a lot of good news for 2022 saying that we will see the biggest stock market crash of our lifetime. We're going to talk cryptos. You also don't have good news for those for the crypto space. But first, the stock market. Harry, my question to you is, Look, you've been calling for this crash for, for quite a long time. In 2021, you were looking for it yeah. to happen in April, then in June. So I have to start with this. Uh, you've been wrong on those calls. Why are you certain now? Okay. It's as simple as this. There, we're in, a, in what I call the orgasmic phase of this bubble. It's just been building and building. People have to realize since 2007, and I called that one 20 years before it happened, late 2007, baby boomers peaked in their spending. We had a peak in the stock market in late 2007, and we went into the first deep recession since the early 80s and the early 30s, okay, the Great Depression. And that's when the, when the Federal Reserve and Central Bank just went nuts. We have printed more money in the last year and a half or so than all of the printing before this, and even you know since 2008 and nine. I mean, just years and years of this. So they keep doing exponentially more. So they're just desperately keeping this bubble going. And when you get in this phase, there's no way to say, oh, it's gonna happen this day or this month. I mean, I was able to predict the 2007 top because I could precisely determine within several months when the baby boomer was gonna peak and momentum was gonna turn down. But this, this is just, a bubble's gonna go until it bursts. I'm now looking literally at more at chart patterns and things like that to see when this bubble looks like it's gonna pop. And, and this looks like one of the times right here in December where it could top. If not that, it'll be early next year. After that, I'm gonna be shocked if we do not see a downturn. So it's at the point where, to me, this is such an extreme bubble. If you're hanging in there to say, well, 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 maybe it goes another three or four or five months. I'm like, get out. What my research does show 100% is that when a bubble like this bursts, you're gonna see 40 to 50% crash in the first two, two and a half months. And, and if you sit and wait for that, it'll happen before you're ready. And then you'll panic when that happens and then it'll bounce and then you'll look like a double idiot. So this is very tricky. And, and I think Baron Rothschild, the, late, the richest man of the 1800s in Europe said, what is the secret to my success? I always got out a bit early. Okay, that's what I say. Be, be on the early side, and, and this is already way later than this thing should have gone, but the governments are exponentially selling more. Now, for the first time, with the economy only coming back in recent months, it was declining in the second, third quarter, okay? After all that stimulus, it was declining. Well, it finally came back uh, with this, you know, recent stimulus, okay? This has put them in a bind. And the economy has suddenly gotten strong. It was weak. Now, so they have to tighten. I, what I'm telling people, Daniela, when you have an economy that's now been stimulated for 12 years against fundamental demographics, against slowing even technology, all my cycles are slowing at this point, and most of them for years, it will not take much to prick this bubble. That's what I'm saying. So just them saying we're going to have to taper and just starting, they're already cutting $30 billion a month and in buying bonds and they're supposed to finish tapering that and then raise interest rates by March, you're going to get a top in here by early next year. I say it looks like it's happening now. That's all. But but I cannot I cannot be accurate at this stage on, on precisely when. Okay. So, and just to go back to the timing, I get it. You know, I've said the same thing to Robert Kiyosaki. You know, it takes, it's hard to stick your neck out with, with a certain call. Um, but why do you think the mark was missed on your original forecast 
of April and June. What happened? They, they just they just keep pumping it up and, and the markets keep buying. I mean, at this stage, the market will only go down when something triggers that's big enough or the last person gets in the stock market. And, and, and you know, it's hard to tell which of those. Uh, but I I think what, what typically happens, Danielle, and this has been every top in this you know boom since the early 80s, when the stocks markets go up for about a decade usually, they usually get pricked when the interest rates, inflation starts to rise late in the boom and the bond rate, the, you know, the bond rates go up. Now the big thing right now, which is extremely unusual, you know, that's like a negative yield of six, 7%. So that I think the treasury bond may, what may be, it keeps edging up, that, that could be the trigger, but, but we're just way beyond uh, this thing. Harry, let me ask you, because that, that, that is the concern, right? That when the Fed would start tightening, what impact would that have on the stock market? But the Fed knows this, right? So won't they do everything in their power to avoid a stock market crash? That, this is what they've been working so hard to avoid. They've been pumping, pumping, pumping. Why would yeah. they just put their guard down? Why would okay. they have- You gotta to remember, you gotta remember there's a lag to everything. Monetary policy lags about eight to now it starts but it lags about 18 months in its real effect. And so they've been forced to, to start to taper off. I, I, what I keep telling people, you gotta understand addictions, you gotta understand bubbles. They're both the same thing. Something blows up, it takes exponentially more to keep in a bubble or an addiction going. And all it takes is just, just pulling back. You don't have to stop the stimulus, just less stimulus. And then no stimulus is all it takes at some point. So it's just a matter and, and so, so now they're forced to get a little more tight. Well, if they're going to decide, if they pull back and immediately get easing quickly, it's going to look like they're panicking. So now that they're in a tightening mode slowly, it's going to take them a little while to respond and go the other way. And in that time, again, remember what I said at the beginning, two to three months, every major bubble burst has happened within three years. And it's been from 42% to 50%. And my calculations on this one that's been so stretched, is it's going to be 54% the first crash. If that first crash happens, if they just slip that long, people will lose confidence in this market. Imagine if the S&P dropped, you know, 54% in two months. You think anybody believe, oh, well, they'll just print money again, it'll come back. You will not see the market come back if it crashes that much. I will almost guarantee you that. Are there certain sectors that will be saved or where do you see the ones getting hit hardest? Well, well, yeah, yeah, obviously it's the small caps are already, the small caps are about, if they break 2,100, that's going to be my first signal. This really is a top. And we're, we're about 50 points from that today, okay? A couple of percent. Uh, the small caps lead, and of course the tech stocks follow. Those will be the ones hit the most. If you get, you know, healthcare and defensive nations and, and consumer staples, of course those are going to hold up better. But in a stock crash like this, after a major bubble, everything will go down, including utilities. It's just those sectors will go down 40 or 50%. And then the leading sectors will go down 70, 80, 90. So, so that's the difference. There is no safe place to hide. The only place to hide, which was proven in 2008, and it wasn't gold. Gold went down 40, 50% in the worst of that crash. It was the US 10 and 30 year treasury bonds and the US dollar that bounced in that crash in late 2008, when it was at its worst, that was the safe haven. That's what I'm telling people to do. Get in treasury bonds. I'd even wait here to let inflation get a little higher, get in these treasury bonds and just sit there and whether the crash happens now or a couple months from now, when it does, it's gonna come like a freight train. That's what history says.